How much do you really know about your cervix? Warning, graphic peaks. Beyond your yearly pap, we'd wager a guess that you don't think much about your cervix. And even then, your PROBZ more preoccupied with your legs being in those metal stirrups, right? But this area of tissue plays a huge role in reproductive and sexual health, says Natasha Johnson, MD, a gynecologist at Brigham and Women's Hospital in Boston. It may be little it usually measures about an inch, but the cervix connects your vagina to the lower part of your uterus, which means all day, every day it's helping to keep everything flowing down there. Here's what you need to know about this vital lady part. 1. It's sometimes called the neck cervix is also the Latin word for neck, says Johnson. And it kind of resembles one, two check it out below. If you think of the uterus as the head, the cervix is the neck, she says. 2. It's a mucus producing monster your nose isn't your only body part churning out slime. With lots of mucus glands, the cervix produces plenty of goo, too. He cervix produces a ton of mucus, and that mucus changes throughout a woman's cycle, says Johnson. This proves important for fertility. During ovulation hen where at our most fertile he mucus looks more watery, she says, which helps sperm pass more easily through the cervical canal. Alternatively, this mucus also acts as a barrier. Some hormonal contraception, for example, will thicken your down the mucus to prevent pregnancy. And during pregnancy, a ucus plug will form, preventing fluid from leaking and bacteria from going up from the vagina to the uterus. 3. It's super vulnerable to infection and disease. Your cervix can be both the site of infections like chlamydia and gonorrhea, as well as precancerous or cancerous cells, says Johnson. In part, that's because it's home to an area called the squamicolumnar junction, a region that undergoes rapid cell turnover. Here, one type of cell squamous is replaced by another columnar epithelium, common in the uterus. That's where HPV gets in, says Johnson. And because that area is vulnerable, HPV can incorporate its genes into the cervix, which can lead to precancer or cancer. That's why it's so important to stay up to date with your paps and make sure to get tested for STDs. When left untreated, STDs can travel up into the uterus causing pelvic inflammatory disease, says Johnson. 4. It doesn't do much for sexual pleasure. Here's a myth that the cervix is critical to sexual pleasure and orgasm, says Johnson. But that really hasn't been shown. In fact, Johnson says that when women have their cervix removed, there's often no change in sexual function and pleasure. One small study of 413 women published in BMJ even found an increase in sexual pleasure after a total hysterectomy which removes the uterus and cervix. It is a critical structure, but as far as sexual pleasure goes, that has more to do with the clitoris, she says. 5. But it's a huge player in childbirth. One huge job the cervix has to dilate to about 10 centimeters on delivery day so that a baby can successfully pass from the uterus. If it's healthy, it softens and gently dilates during labor, says Johnson. Oh, and you can blame intense contractions on that dilation and the uterus itself contracting, she says. Thanks a lot, cervix.